Hey there, welcome back to Smarts Farm. I'm Jack and we're gonna be making some sheep feta today. It's the first on our cheese making journey here at Smarts Farm. It's a fresh cheese that we're gonna put in brine, very probably one of the simplest ones to make. And as um, we work with uh, fermenting or preserving foods, it's always a matter of the amount of moisture, salt, and time. And so as we go through this recipe, it'll, that'll kind of stick with you to make you understand as to um, how we're gonna give uh, this product longevity and um, how we go from there. So we're gonna take this fresh sheep's milk right here. We've already pasteurized this so that, um, and we did it at a low temperature, uh, our vat pasteurization. So we brought it up to 140 and held it for 20 minutes and then chilled it back down. And so today we only have to heat this milk up to about 85. Um, and we're here in the US and you're not gonna be able to find uh, any sheep's milk commercially available. Uh, the, there are other uh, different health food stores you can get a uh, cow's milk or goat's milk. You want the same thing, one that's been at a low temperature um, process, nothing homogenized, and um, you need that to, for the cultures and develop the flavor um, with the cheese. So I'm gonna just pour this in here. This is just about two gallons of milk. And we're gonna bring this up to 85 degrees, and this is gonna take about uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Okay, so some of the equipment that we need um, for in any type of cheese making is we need to use a uh, non-reactive or a stainless steel, or you can use copper. But you can't use an alloy because the milk will react to it, you'll get a green cheese. And the same thing um, when salt, we have to use a non-iodized salt, so a kosher salt or sea salt. Um, when we're working with this. So our milk has come up to the mid 80s, about 85, 86 degrees. And what we're gonna do is inoculate it with our cultures. What are cultures? These are bacteria or bugs that are already naturally in the milk. It's the good ones. So we're gonna add a lipase, which is again, naturally found in this milk. And we're gonna add mesophilic. And we're just gonna create with this temperature of milk, which is a great catalyst for creating this big bloom. So we're gonna just sprinkle this lipase right over the top and we used an eighth of a teaspoon, and we're using a quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic. And we're gonna let this sit on top of the milk for a few minutes to let it absorb um, the milk. If we just start to stir it in, it'll granulize and sink to the bottom. You'll get kind of a weird texture um, when you're making your cheese. Okay, so our culture has been sitting on top of the milk. Now we're just gently stirring it in. Don't be too rambunctious. We don't want to beat up the milk or anything like that. And then what we're going to do is let the milk then, again, so we're going to let this bloom in here before we add the rennet. Okay, our milk's been sitting for about 45 minutes. You can let it go between 45 minutes and an hour. Like I said, this when we're doing these fresh cheeses, the recipes, you don't have to be exact, exact on that. So we have uh, about a teaspoon of rennet here. Lots of recipes will also want you to dilute in non-chlorinated water. I think it works just as well to add it directly in there. So as I'm stirring, I'm just going to add this rennet and gently move it around the milk. And just like with the when we added the culture, we're gonna stir for about a minute, minute and a half here. And then we're gonna let the milk rest again for about 30 to 45 minutes until we get a nice clean curd. And I'll show you what that is, what a break in your curd. Okay, so we let the milk sit for about an hour. The, um, it's definitely turned into a really nice solid curd here. There's a little bit of whey on top, but we're just gonna show you right here um, how, how it heals back right there. So it's ready to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the curd. You can use a knife just to cut it back and forth, or they have these handy things called a, a, a cheese harp. And we just slide that down in there and we're gonna go and we're gonna cut the curd here like this. And then we're gonna give it about 10 minutes for these curds to heal back. And then we're gonna scoop it into our forms. Okay, so our curd is ready and we're, we're putting it into these forms. I like to use these, They're, uh, it comes out in a nice uh, big block. And you're, just, you're gonna just keep filling these and filling the curd up here, gently again, because we don't wanna damage them. Uh, but you're just gonna keep scooping this in here until this fills and it'll drain. And you'll probably fill it up two or three times. Each one of these, this is two gallons of milk, so uh, believe it or not, a gallon of this will curd in here, will fit in here. And it'll give you 
Um, with sheep's milk, we're gonna get about a pound and a half of uh, feta. As it fills this way, it's just gonna continue to drain and drain it and drain. And again, you can see underneath here, it's just, this thing is gonna get full. So all the liquid is basically gonna drain into here after about 16 or 20 hours. Usually about eight hours, I like to flip these over. It's an easy thing to do here, is we would just wrap this over here and then we'd flip the cubes over, the cheese turns. And again, we're just gonna keep adding until all of this has fit into these two small forms. This is one we started earlier, and this has been setting, and you can see that we have two really nice, solid blocks of feta here. So what we, our next step that we're gonna do with this is we're gonna harden off the cheese. So we have the salt here, and we're gonna do a, a salt crust around it. So, and what we're gonna do, once we salt it, we're gonna put it in a container, and we're gonna let it sit at room temperature. It can't be above, you want it around 85, 75 is a, is a good temperature. But we're just gonna take, real simple to salt this, you're gonna get every edge here. So you can see that nice crust that we're getting on there. And you're just gonna set that in there. And again, it's gonna continue for the next two days to draw out liquid. You can drain off that liquid each day if you want or you can just simply leave it in there and when you're, it's time to go, you can just uh, dump it. It's not gonna hurt the cheese sitting in that liquid. Um, but again, so what we're gonna lose here on those blocks is about another 20% in volume by taking out that. So that, that'll help to firm it up. So we just put the lid on here and let it sit. So now we're gonna work on the brine. Like I said, from all of the whey that um, was extracted from uh, the curd, we're using it right here. Um, most of the time, the correct thing to do is to weigh your salt um, by measure, but we can use for this about a gallon of whey and about a gallon of salt is what we'll need to cover those two things. So we're gonna heat this up to about 180, so it's cooked. And we add the salt in here, and we're just gonna stir this around till it dissolves. And then what you'll do is you'll till this once you've brought it up to 180, you'll chill this down, put it in your fridge so that when these have been done for two days sitting in here, you'll add them to your chilled whey and then you'll let it brine in the whey for about two weeks. You can taste it along the way, but I'm gonna show you in a minute this really great feta that you'll get out of um, using the whey brine instead of just a simple um, water and salt. This uh, feta we did about actually three weeks ago and it's been in the brine. I'm gonna stick my paws in here. Um, again, they're clean, so we don't have to worry about it. And this is a salt brine, so it's not something crazy. But you can just see from the nice solidness here. Um, oftentimes what we'll do when we make feta is we'll leave it in this brine, and then we'll take it out and dry it a bit, and then we'll put it in olive oil. And then what it does then is starts to pull that olive oil into the cheese as well, and it's just one of the best things there is. So I'm just gonna break this so you guys can see it on there. And it also, you can break it and crumble it, or you can see that you can also just get this really nice slice out of there. 